what's the point? That, that's an enduring question that I sort of always ask. <laughs> what's the point? My full name is Eric Strong Sensman. Strong is my grandma's maiden name, who is 98 years old and still alive, so. I grew up in Missouri, in a suburb, the stereotypical American upbringing, I guess. I was not a lifelong runner, like many are in the sport. I was super into baseball. That was kind of my thing. I played like one year in high school, but the dream faded. My first year of college, I read uh, Dean Carnaz's book. It says somewhere in there that anyone can fake a marathon. And so I thought, well, I understand logic. And if anyone can do it, then I can. So I started running and I trained for a marathon and I, I finished it. Uh, three hours, 37 minutes. Pretty slow. I think studying philosophy in school got me to ask what really matters. Why do we believe the things we believe? Why do we do the things we do? How can I live life in a way that I can do things that I enjoy? And running quickly became one of those things. There aren't many facets of life where you get a, sort of this direct feedback loop where work you put in, you can directly see the results of that. So ultra running is a really good subset of the sport of running in that sense, because it's very much connected to how, how much work you put in. I think more so than say, if you're a 400 meter runner, where you need a level of speed that no amount of miles can get you. If you figure out how to train and you, and you put in the miles, you can, you can be competitive in a way that you can't be at shorter distances. That, that's the thing, I was always very competitive. Always wanted to win. I recently came across my second grade report card and the teacher said in the comments, Eric has made great progress in being less competitive. If I'm running with a couple guys at the front of a race, I can sort of convince myself that I feel better than they do which may not be true. In racing, you're just, you kind of just have to mess with yourself. A lot of it is what you can do with your mind or convince yourself of. I think it's especially true in these longer distance events. You just have so much time to convince yourself one way or the other about what you're doing. Anything can happen. I mean, I've experienced that myself. I've seen it happen. You start to ask yourself like, am I still capable of going through really tough circumstances in, in persevering um, in accomplishing what I want. I don't think you ever answer the question. Like that, I think that's what keeps people doing it. Running doesn't matter, objectively. Uh, if you're a good runner or a bad runner, doesn't matter. A fulfilled life is one in which you are challenged and you overcome those challenges and you enjoy yourself while you're doing it. Whatever we're doing while, while we're here, we, we should be trying to do things we enjoy and to do things that make us happy. Subjectively to me, like I wanna be a good runner. Um, I want to be top 10 at Western States. The, those are things that I want. So I think that sort of balance, at least for me, can both put things into perspective, but also you know, give my life a structure and a meaning that uh, is kind of required if, if you're going to enjoy life. Yeah, you got to try to have fun with it. Um, I've run a lot of quite a few 100Ks, a lot of 50 milers, quite a few 50Ks. I'm not necessarily that interested in running 100 miles, um, but I am interested in running Western States because of the history, because of the competition it brings. I think anyone that learns about ultra running, like they hear about Western States, like that's the race. For 10 years, I've wanted to get 
top 10 at Western States. It hasn't happened, but I keep working to get back. The, the idea of, of making that happen is, it, that'll motivate me until I do it. <laughs> 100 miles is a tricky distance. Uh, it's a long time to be out there. My first time in Western States, I finished 78th, 23 hours. <laughs> After being fourth at mile 62, but the race does not end at mile 62, it's 38 more miles, uh, most of which I had to walk. hadn't hadn't paced it quite right. It's 4 a.m. <laughs> and then the second time I ran it, um, I ended up dropping at mile 85. I think I've learned a lot from the first two years. I think I can be, you know, a little bit less aggressive and be in a better place later on. Trusting that later in the race, you're gonna be able to pass people. Given that my margins are sort of thinner, I think I have to race a little bit more aggressively. I think I need to have a pretty good race to, to finish where I think I can at that race, which is definitely in the top 10. Black Canyon was, yeah, a couple months ago in February. It's three months after my dad passed away. Um, first time racing. I just uh, was able to execute what I thought I could do on the day. Trying to run hard from the beginning and try to put myself in a position to, to be top two. It had been 13 months since I'd raced. Previous races had not gone super well. So you're always kind of like, well, uh, I think I can do X, Y, or Z, but recent history would suggest that that's not true. You have to Sort of be mentally disciplined, to, I think, to race well. You really have to be able to like compartmentalize a lot of things. But towards the end of the race, when you realize you're gonna accomplish what you wanted to, I think it's natural to kind of reflect on how you were able to do that. I was lucky to have my dad as a big part of my life. Not everyone's so fortunate. Jackie, of course, who I'm now married to, and uh, we've been together a long time, and my mom who's always at my races and you know you just start to think about how fortunate you are. I don't think I would have had the opportunities I had to succeed in the sport especially ultra running if not for the the many people in my life. Life's, life's short if you can do things for the people that you love that things that are meaningful to them you should do them. At the end of the day Running's just running, and um, if you uh, if you win a lot of races and you're an asshole, you're you're still an asshole. Um, <laughs> so the winning, uh, I think, only takes you so far. I mean, I, I have the same sort of motivations and in goals now as I did a year ago, and probably as long as I am competitive in the sport, and that's just see what's possible for me. That's kind of always been my motivating factor. Uh, doing that over a variety of distances and variety of terrains, seeing what you can get out of yourself, it's always sort of changing. I think that's what uh, keeps me motivated. I mean, I think I have a story that is much more digestible to people, uh, the average runner than a lot of guys that are running uh, at a top level. And some people root for me because I was them in a way. I was just like an average runner. And I think it just shows if you have a goal and you work hard, you can, you can achieve it. Even if you're not predisposed to be, to achieve the goal that you want to. You can change kind of your, your lifestyle or you can change, you can become better at something. I think that's really powerful. I hope that's what people see with my running career is that uh, you can accomplish things that you want to accomplish if, if you work hard and you believe in it. <laughs>